All right, welcome everyone to this Thursday night's edition of Southern Woods and Waters. And we're mainly going to be in the waters. Although some of the show's going to be in the, in the wood. I mean, you can find some of these things in, in, the, in the ground. But mostly we're going to be talking about crawfish or crayfish. It's according to which side of the Tennessee River you own. <laughs> Whether it's crawfish or crayfish. But I have got two fantastic employees of the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency with me tonight. And these two are the premier experts in the field of crawfish, crayfish, or I just call them crustaceans. Uh, uh, I guess I'm right in that, mm -hmm. in calling them that. And with me tonight, let's widen out and introduce our guest to you. I have Bart Carter. Bart, thank you so much for coming on the show with us tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for having us. We're glad to be here. And and you brought Carl Williams. And Carl, you are such a, I mean, anybody that talks about you two's name always comes up when it's talking about crawfish or crayfish. Yeah, mainly he is. <laughs> well, both of you. I mean, both of you. But, but both of you are out of East Tennessee, right. out of the Knoxville area. Uh, so that's... Uh, yeah, our, our uh, regional office is there in Morristown. In Morristown. So mm -hmm. that's Region 1. Region 4. I mean, Region 4. Right. I, left to right, Hugh. Left to right. Yeah. <laughs> it's Region 4. But, uh, uh, guys, you came here to Tennessee, Middle Tennessee, and, uh, and we're... For some reason, we don't have our feature film, and, and we will get that on there. But I want to tell everybody a little bit about it. Um, we went down to Carl Williams, there's a Seven Mile Creek right here, That's right? right. Uh -huh. We went to Seven Mile Creek, right? And this is, we were, we could see downtown Nashville, the, okay. the, sky, the skyscrapers, the tall buildings, and, and Bart, we were catching the Nashville crayfish. That's great. Which yeah. is on the is it state or federally protected? It's federally protected. Federal, federally protected right. crawfish and uh, or crayfish. Very unique in that it only lives in a couple areas, right, Carl? Yeah, it only occurs in Mill Creek Watershed, which is uh, located in Davidson and a little bit of Williamson County. And that's the only place in the world it's found. So it's Mill Creek, Seven Mile Creek, just in in those, just mm -hmm. really in those two areas. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's correct. And he's a you're going to see the film if we don't show it tonight it'll be next week but we're going to show that film because i'm going to tell you it was a blast just to go with you guys and and we were lifting rocks and everything and and now this crayfish he's a little bit of got a little attitude yeah it gets pretty big and it's does that big is that why all nashville's kind of have a little bit of attitude? <laughs> <laughs> but he's got a little attitude mm -hmm. and a little aggressive that's right uh are, are all crayfish that way or well some are more aggressive than others some are really docile and uh, some are just known to be aggressive and you got to be careful picking them up but now now bart i want to start off with how many different species because i want this to be real information yeah fishermen you better have gotten that pen and pad i've warned you on facebook and twitter <laughs> you need to bring that <laughs> pencil and paper because you're gonna have to take notes on this one now i'm telling you how many different species, Bart, do we have here within the confines of the state of Tennessee? We have 88 described species. 88 described species. And I thought it was 78, so I missed yeah. it by 10. And, and I, I'm going to tell you what I did. I, I put this on Facebook that Tennessee is number one in crayfish. <laughs> <laughs> We've got more than any other state in the nation. And Louisiana's just robbing us blind. Don't, um, <laughs> think they're the crawfish state. We're the crawfish state. That's right. Yeah. And so we got 88 different species, and it uh, they're very healthy. I'm telling you, the ones, and we brought, they brought plenty of specimens. We're actually going to get to see a bunch of different crawfish or crayfish uh, colors. Right. And and I'd like to tell, tell them a little bit of history um, Carl, you and I talked about the moon phase and how important it is to the crawfish. Uh, would you explain it to our audience what you're talking about? The moon phase, that's a, it's a good thing for fishermen like to watch the moon phase, but how important it is, is it to the crawfish? Well, uh, if, you, if you're talking about what crayfish, how they behave during the different phases of the moon. Right. Well, they would, uh, crayfish are nocturnal. And uh, so that means they basically uh, are more active at night. Right. Uh, in the daytime, they mostly hide under rocks or logs or 
up under root wads and banks. But at night, crayfish just become more active and uh, they come out and on a, uh, on a full moon, they're probably even more active. Okay. So uh, that would be, as far as a fisherman's concerned, that would be a good time to think, well, fish may be feeding more on crayfish on this full moon. Well, you know, you, uh, during the day, mostly you know, for bass fishermen, crappie fishermen, stuff like smallmouth, largemouth, they're, they're feeding on shad, really, during the day. Thread fins, gizzard shad, and stuff like that. Because a fish has a problem getting one of those big flat rocks up to get one of these. Mm -hmm. So they have to wait till they come out. That's right. right. And so they come out at night because they're, they're a nocturnal feeder. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's when... See, we've been doing it really, I think... When you told me that, it was going through my head. Now, wait a minute. I throw big worms at night, and I ought to be throwing crawfish at night. But I'm throwing big worms at night, and I'm throwing crawfish during the day. That's that's backwards from what it should be. So, yeah. uh, you know, I'm just thinking out loud here. <laughs> I'm thinking out loud. I'm trying to help everybody. Certainly something to try. It'd be a, uh, oh, yeah. You know, a little bit of change up there to... Now, any help with the fishing. Bart, we know about a little bit about the moon, but what do we know about the sizes? I mean, can you give me a variance of sizes that we have? Uh, and we'll show them. We're going to show them the crawfish in a second, seven. But would you say from half, three quarters inch up to seven, eight, nine inches? And we'll we've got an example of the largest one. You, we do have an example yeah. of the largest crayfish in Tennessee, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to bring that baby lobster out here in just a few minutes. Because <laughs> that thing, I mean, you know, if you go to a crawfish boil, you only need about four of those and you're good. Because <laughs> yeah, it's a mouthful right there. But yeah. uh, what about our health of our crawfish in this state? Are we, are we really, you two really concerned about anything uh, as far as crayfish or crawfish in this state? Well, uh, probably the biggest thing we have to be concerned about right now, of course, pollution and, and habitat degradation are two big things. But we've got another factor that's that's coming on here in recent years, and uh, that's the introduction of non-native species. And, crayfish? Right. Okay. Crayfish. Uh, I know you've had guests on here before that's talked about the silver carp and the oh, yeah. carp oh, and yeah. what they're doing. But we also have non-native crayfish that are, that have been introduced into our waters, and a lot of in a lot of situations, they're displacing our native native crayfish, and we've got a couple of of, of examples of those here with us tonight. But um, you identified these crayfish, these these uh, imposters. Uh, well, yeah, Carl and and others have have worked and identified these areas uh, that you know there's probably still some out there that we're not aware of, but uh, here recently in Cherokee Reservoir. This lot over the last couple of weeks, uh, we've we we think we found a, a new introduction, a rusty crayfish, which is is non-native. Man, and, uh, so we have uh, what is it three three coral that we're we're looking at that uh, right. we've got the Kentucky River rusty and the virile crayfish, which are all Ohio River drainage uh, species that have been brought in mainly. You know, we we feel like the 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 avenues there have been uh, through bait, through and, bait, and that's that's kind of led led us into another avenue where we've developed a, a, a bait proclamation uh, uh, that that tries to control the spread and and how people use these crayfish and, and well, I know Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency's put on their website and everywhere. If if you have a bucket of minnows, don't throw them in the water anymore. Right. So. Uh, they're virtually saying you're virtually saying the same thing about crayfish. Right. Don't throw them back in the water. Uh, throw them in the trash if nothing else. Right. It, you know you're better off there in the trash than yeah, back right. in the water. Right. All right, guys, we got to take a quick break. When we come back, man, are we going to get to play show and tell for you tonight? I'm so excited about this. Hurry back to more of Southern Woods and Waters. This segment is being brought to you by Stan Sloan Zora Bait Company, where setting the hook is an everyday thing. All right, this week's Peach of the Week is being brought to you by Flowers Deer Processing. 
let me tell you something. Those people are so busy. I have never, they, they've been sending me pictures of what's been going on out there at the processing plant. Oh my gosh, we're gonna have a great year for harvesting on deer, I'm gonna tell you. Hey, this week, uh, the first picture and the second picture here, this is some young sportsmen that I wanted to show you. These guys are uh, over there at Flowers Deer Processing. They're checking in their, their deer. This is from the youth hunt just the other day that we had. And look at the these kids. They just, such big smiles on their face. Uh, uh, we'll show you some more next week. We wanted to spread these kids' pictures out just a little bit, but my goodness, what, what a jewel to have a, a child out there with big smiles on their face, their biggest bucks ever. Our, our third picture here, this is uh, Bubba Crutcher, good friend of mine, Bubba Crutcher. Uh, works for uh, First Tennessee Bank, by the way, if you want any banking needs, you can go check out Bubba. But this is his first bow kill, and man, he's happy. He, I know Bubba personally, he's uh, Joy's cousin, and uh, I know him personally. Uh, he's a, one of those guys that just gets tickled all over. I mean, it goes all the way from the toes up. So uh, he's just a great, great guy. And this is Bobby Gannon. And he said, Hugh, I killed this one in Van Buren County on November the 11th. It's my first nice buck I've ever taken. And he said, check out this, Hugh. I'm still smiling. All right, that's some great deals right there. Just some great pictures. Maybe get you in the mood to go deer hunting this weekend. You can send your pictures to us here at Southern Woods and Waters, 474 James Robinson Parkway in Nashville, Tennessee, 37219, or simply email them to me at hugh at southernwoodsandwaters.com. We'll get them on there really, really fast. Lots of deer pictures coming in. Keep them coming. i tell you something else, too. We got a few guys that are hardcore fishermen. Man, they're sending in some fish that you just would I got I, some over eight pounders are being caught at Lake Gunnersville right now. Yeah. Uh, that place just keeps putting the fish up there, doesn't it? I mean, it's just full of them. But we're going to help you tonight. I hope you've went and got that pen and paper while we had the break because we're going to help you tonight. What I want you to pay special attention to, not only... You've heard of this all the time. Match the hatch, match the hatch, match the hatch. Well, guys, it's it's easy to match a thread fin shad or, or a gizzard shad or, or a, a bluegill or a pumpkin seed. It's easy to match those because they, they vary in sizes all the way through the water system. But now crayfish, you got to get a little specific on this stuff. There's a time to use a small finesse jig, time to use a hair jig, and then there's time to use a big mop jig. But you better have the colors right mm -hmm. because we know as well as anybody and you guys too fish are finicky when it comes they want that that special one that they've been feeding on and this is a great opportunity for you to be able to take notes and our camera guy she's going to keep it on us we're going to make some real close-ups now guys let's start off with what are the three do you, you said you got a couple of the ones that are the imposters the invasives the invasives mm -hmm. uh can you show me some of those, Bart and Carl? And, sure. and let's see what they look like. Uh, and then that way we know what we're looking at as far as, as knowing the difference between. And by the way, can, can anybody out here in our viewing audience, Bart, be able to uh, look at a website or something and know what is available in Tennessee, what Tennessee normally has, and what is a, uh, an evasive well, we're, we're we're working on that. Carl's actually working on a, a website for us right now that that will have photographs of of all the species. Because he's got bunches of photographs. He has bunches, <laughs> of photographs, and they're very good. They are. That. Well, Carl, what is that one there? That is well, this, that looks like a Nashville crayfish. Well, this it's is a, this is, a, is an invasive species, and it's called the Kentucky River crayfish. Okay. And it's uh, native to the Ohio River. Can you system. hold him real still there? And, and I can. They're going to take a look at him right there. Okay. Oh, buddy. Got his claws pulled in there, but, but this now, one has green a... green as a gourd. Uh, it's green, and it, it has a distinctive rusty color here on the side of the abdomen. Yeah. And that's sort of characteristic of that species and helps in determining what species This is the have. Kentucky... The Kentucky River crayfish. And uh, uh, it's impacting uh, the native crayfish in East Tennessee. Uh, we have a pretty bad... Uh, infestation of them in the Holston River and the Clinch River and Nolichucky River systems. Okay. 
and it, it displaces some of the natives like the surgeon crayfish. Okay. And this You talked a while ago about some crayfish being more aggressive than other species. That is pretty aggressive. This is really aggressive and it's real adaptive to a lot of different types. So he can of take it. over just about anywhere. He can. It's one of the few species that can actually inhabit the, the man-made lakes like Cherokee Lake and Norse Lake. It right, can live right. in the lake. Man, that is that is a big crawfish right there. That's mm -hmm. a pretty big crayfish. I'm in a smallmouth. He see him. He, he might he might go a few hours without eating. <laughs> <That's again. right. laughs> pretty good meal. Huh? That's right. Well, that's neat because that does now look a lot like that Nashville crayfish mm -hmm. that we saw. So, right. uh, one of the now we don't have a Nashville crayfish with us tonight, but I was noticing. Uh, can you pull another one out? Let, show them what you're talking about, Carl, when you talk about the saddle. You only, you talk in the film about the saddle and the colorations on the saddle. Right. Uh, let our viewers know what you're talking about. about uh, well, I'll get one out here that has a really distinct saddle. Okay. In fact, its common name is the saddle crayfish. The saddle crayfish. And... Uh, this is uh, really common here Hold in Middle real Tennessee. Still. They're going to they're take a picture of him. And okay. you can see it has a horseshoe shape, shaped saddle on the uh, carapace here that starts and comes around the back of the carapace and then back down the other side. Now is it that its natural colors right there? Is it uh, a little light tan, a little green, a little black? Yeah, that's pretty typical of the way they look in the Duck River system. Now this is a Duck River system crayfish. This here. is mm -hmm. right. And so uh, all those four and five pounders we catch on Duck River, that, that's one of their favorite little meals yeah. right there. Yeah, if you could uh, if you could match that with an artificial lure, you you would be very. Well, effective. I think I, I, I can hear the wheels are turning out there now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that one he's even got a little orange on the on his tips there mm -hmm. too, yep. Carl. Uh, a lot of species uh, in the genus Orchidectes, and uh, a lot of those have orange tips. They have a black submarginal band and then an orange terminal tip. Very, very much on the tip. Right. And his antennae is is kind of orange or reddish orange in color too. They are. And this that varies too as to how. Uh, close they are to the molt stage okay because crayfish their skeletons are on the outside right so as they grow they have to uh, molt out of that shell and grow a new one so when they first molt they'll be really brightly colored now what do you mean by brightly colored like that one right there the duck river what is he good what kind of colors well be? this uh, part that you see here that's tan would yeah. be even lighter colored it, okay. and a greater contrast between that and the saddle when is their molting they molt Four times a year, is that right? Well, it just depends. When they're young, they molt really often as they grow. And then when they become mature, then they'll only molt twice a year. Okay, typically. that's right, that's right, that's right. Uh, and usually that's in the spring and fall. Spring and fall. So mm -hmm. they're going through a molt right now. Yeah, these molted probably about a month or six weeks ago. Okay, because we, we're having a full moon this weekend. What do you think that's going to do? They're really through molting for the fall season, aren't they? They are, yeah. Okay. So we can go with a little bit darker colors now uh, if we're fishing for them? Yeah, from now all the way through the winter and until the spring, until they molt again, they'll get darker as time goes by. And they'll, they'll become less distinctive, the color patterns. Boy, I hope you people, my our viewers are out there writing <laughs> this stuff down. That is valuable information right there. What about our next one? What about, it? just just pick out some and just talk to us about it. And we're saving Big Boy for last, okay? Okay. okay. <laughs> Well, let's talk a little bit more about some of the ones that, that you might, you know, uh, fish with or try to yeah, match yeah, yeah, for yeah. bait. Uh, we talked about the Duck River form of the saddle crayfish. You bet. Now, this is the Cumberland River form. And it, as you can see, it's less distinctive. The, All right, the saddle. That, we're going to hold that real still for him. Oh, he's, he's got a little attitude, too. Yeah, he'd like to get Let a hold Let me of go. <laughs> But now he's can, a little he's a little darker than the Duck River one. A little darker and less contrast between the saddle and the the regular background body color. Okay, and, and what do you mean by contrast? Do you mean like the the colors aren't changing a whole lot? Well, I just mean the difference in color between the saddle and the background and the abdomen? color. Yeah. Okay. Kind of so, all runs together. He looks like yeah, yeah. He's, a little he's more, more drab. Little, 
He's a lot like an olive drab color. Yeah. And uh, you and I even made the statement on film that uh, they look like they were part of the army yeah. <laughs> because they're all olive drab. Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah. The ones that live in streams are typically uh, camouflage. You know, they mm -hmm. tend to try to mimic the substrate in the stream. You know, like if it's a gravel cobble, they'll try to look like that. If there's a lot of uh, bedrock and things you know they'll try so they, do they adapt to the color or they have they got some part of a chameleon type not not it's a genetic thing it's a genetic yeah. thing okay okay right. all right and the ones that uh, there are some species there are about 15 species in the state that live in burrows right and, 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 and we talked about that uh right. matter of fact we caught one remember right. we, we set, caught one set we set the trap one. and caught mm -hmm. one and, and uh, uh there is a difference between burrowing uh, crayfish in waterborne or what I call that stay in the water all the time. Right. Well, these are uh, the ones that live in the stream we call a pigeon crayfish and then uh, Say that again the, now. The a, ones that live in a stream. A pigeon. That just means they live in the surface water. Okay. And uh, the, the burrowing species uh, for whatever reason they tend to be the most spectacular in color. They can be, uh, some of them are just uh, cobalt blue some are uh, UT orange. Really? Yeah. And, Tennessee and really is number one. <laughs> yeah. <that's right. laughs> and uh, for for whatever reason, they're the ones that seem to have the most bright, brightest, and brilliant colors. Well, that is amazing. I tell you what, we got to go right now and do our products of the week. But don't leave, ladies and gentlemen. We still got more crayfish to show than uh, Carter's got liver pills. So uh, <laughs> hurry back. Uh, we're gonna go right now though and do our tip of the week. Southern Woods and Waters product of the week brought to you by FowlQuest. All right, hey, got a great one for you tonight. For all you guys that like to go on the stream, the duck, uh, uh, stream fishing, duck river, and you don't have a place for those big coolers, man, check this out. This is Ice Mule Coolers. This is a soft sided cooler. Great, great thing. You can put all your stuff in here. You can put a sandwich. You can put uh, uh, a couple of apple sauces and maybe a, a cold drink or two and some water. Pour your ice over it. This thing will stay in your boat. It's like, you know, those dry bags or something. Uh, it's like those, but you can have this in your boat. Folds up, keeps ice bar 24 hours. And I want to show you, look, look how thick this thing is. This thing would keep it cold. We could get one of those crawfish in here. He'd stay a while. <laughs> but this is a great, great thing for you. Even backpackers, uh, hunters. Guys, this is this is a way to carry. You throw this thing in your UTV or ATV. You don't have to lug around that big cooler. Uh, great, great deal right here. Check them out. IceMuleCoolers.com. All right? Hey, we got to take a break. When we come back, we're going to take your phone calls. We not, may not take many because we still got a lot of crayfish here to cover. Please get your pen and pencil if you hadn't already because you're gonna need it for the next segment. Hurry back to more of Southern Woods and Water.